for the first time in my life, um, <laughs> experienced heat stroke. And I thought I was going to die. And I like just remember I grabbed on to my co-star, um, Adam Beach, who played my husband, because I just felt like the world go like vroom. And I like grabbed onto him and my body just started shaking uncontrollably. And then the set medic, as uh, she was giving me oxygen and they were hydrating me and whatnot and giving me IVs, um, they, uh, she, she started to tell me um, that actually a stunt man passed away a week prior to this from heat stroke. And I was like, oh my God, I'm really going to die. <laughs> Welcome to A Word on Westerns. I'm Rob Word, and today we have an Indian princess, Pocahontas. <laughs> well, not really Pocahontas. She played Pocahontas. Here she is right here, Koryanka Kilcher. Hello. Hello. Welcome. Thank you. Thank Not only did she play Pocahontas, but she is in Hostiles, and I've seen it four times. Oh, you're sweet. It's so special. Mm -hmm. I've been reading that it's the best Western since Unforgiven. How were you cast in this? It's actually a funny story. I actually um, was reading a newspaper, and I saw, um, I saw that Scott was doing a Western. And I am such a big fan of his, of course. Um, love uh, Out of the Furnace and uh, Black Mass and Crazy Heart. And I called my agent and my manager, and I was like, they're doing a Western, and there has to be some role in there for me that would be uh, fitting. And um, I was like, can you please keep an eye out for, uh, for any roles that might pop up? I would just love to work with Scott, and then to reunite with Christian again, it would be so great to work with him. Mm -hmm. Sure enough, there was a role of Elk Woman in there, and... Uh, I went into Francine Maisler's office, who's actually the same casting director that cast me when I was 14 years old to play Pocahontas in the New World. I met with her and uh, put myself in tape for Scott. And it wasn't until I was on set and, you know, I thanked Scott for casting me and I was just so happy to be a part of the project. He was like, well, I don't even know why you auditioned for this because I wrote the role with you in mind anyway because I just loved you in the new world. <laughs> so, uh, so that was super flattering and, and so, so sweet and so kind of him. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so that's how I came into doing Hostels. Yeah. Scott said he got everybody that he wanted he uh, did, and I got to work again, also reunite with the amazing actor, Wes Studi, that's just so phenomenal and uh, just so great to work with. Everybody um, gets so. such heartfelt performances. Yeah. And it's a journey. Uh, mm -hmm. like, like any great Western, it is a journey. Uh, right. Almost like stagecoach in that you have a group of people that are trying to get to another destination, except in this one, all of them die, it seems like. <laughs> well, I'm not giving up. It goes yeah. throughout. <laughs> they're, they're turning on me. Spoiler alert. <laughs> no, I'm joking. No, not everyone dies. No, um, but uh, what we got to do with the film, actually, which was really great, is suit, uh, shoot chronologically. So, uh, and that doesn't get to happen on, on, on many films. So, um, you know... It's the story of a bunch of people kind of thrown together, together essentially, a bunch of misfits, so to say. And just by our surroundings and our journey, we're forced to kind of break down those unseen barriers that, you know, and it's such a timeless story and so relevant today with many of the things, I think, that we're facing as humanity um, of just, you know, focusing on the things that bring in bring us together as human beings rather than the things that divide us and recognizing the similarities that we all share. And um, and so for me, that's one of the things that drew me to the script and that I really liked my character and Rosamund Pike's character um, really connect on that we're both mothers. And, you know, with the world that we were living in at that time, we were raised to fear one another and to fear that which we do not know. And 
as we go through the story and, you know, around every turn you are facing possible death, we start to recognize the similarities that we share, that we're both mothers and, um, and just those things. And it's, uh, it's really beautiful and very strong because uh, from that we start to see each other more as, as human beings and we're not so afraid of each other anymore. That surely comes across in the film. It's so strong. Christian's journey mm-hmm. of change and Wes's also. Right. They were warring enemies, and that's what they did. Well, it's an interesting topic, um, and it plays with it a little bit in the title itself, Hostiles. We can all be hostiles at times, and yes, we can judge somebody about their actions of how they react in a situation, but if we put ourselves in their shoes like, and did that, like, would we react the same way or would we not? And we all have the capability to be hostiles. The imagery in New Mexico, every frame yeah. could have been a painting. Mm-hmm. Just beautiful. Was was the weather in your favor as you were shooting? I know the whole thing seemed like it was on location. Uh, well, it was actually, so it was one of those things off of my checklist because since I was a little girl, it was one of my dreams to do a, uh, Western. And I love horseback riding. I used to do rodeos when I was little and whatnot in Hawaii, which is where I grew up. I really, really loved it, although I <laughs> kind of don't want to do it again because the elements <laughs> were quite amazing and there was no acting required because uh, because we were really in it. There was like dust storms. There was like monsoon season. There was like storms, thunder, rain storms, all sorts of things happening. And, you know, we'd have to stop shooting. And of course, like Scott and Christian would like sneak away with a camera and try to get another shot in and different things like that. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so basically... Normally when you're on a set, there's a little, you you can go back to your trailer at some point during the day. But on this one, since our locations were so remote, um, we would, you know, get dressed in the morning around like five in the morning, six in the morning, whatever your call time would be. And then you'd be out pretty much on the back of your horse the whole day. That's everybody's dream here, I think. (laughs) (laughs) Well, it's really nice, but I actually, for the first time in my life, um, experienced heat stroke, and I thought I was going to die. And I just remember I grabbed onto my co-star, Adam Beach, who played my husband, because I just felt like the world go like vroom. And I, like, grabbed onto him, and my body just started shaking uncontrollably. And then the set medic, as uh, she was giving me oxygen and they were hydrating me and whatnot and giving me IVs, um, they, uh, she, she started to tell me um, that actually a stunt man passed away a week prior to this from heat stroke. And I was like, oh my God, I'm really going to die. <laughs> um, but uh, so the elements were, you know, they were really real. And it, it was really great that um, Scott and everyone were just such troopers. I've, uh, I, I still to this day cannot um, believe how much energy Scott Cooper has. He's just so vibrant and just so so passionate. He's like a true filmmaker. And that's so rare to find because oftentimes you work with filmmakers, it's a job. They're doing it for the money and they're like, "Uh, okay, I'll do this. But he was just so passionate about it. And every day he would show up on set, he was like, how is everyone doing? And his hair was always perfect and it was just like amazing. And it was like, and I was just like, wow. And I'd be sitting there on my horse like, really tired, not really happy to be there at five in the morning. And he just had such a beautiful, vibrant energy about him that just was so infectious and just made you feel like, okay, well, maybe I shouldn't be in such a bad mood because <laughs> the director's just well, so He nice said he stuff. always wanted to make a Western and as a former actor himself, yeah, he loves actors. Yeah, no, and, and you know, that's, uh, it really shows and he just really knows because he has the background of, of being an actor, he just knows when you got it and he knows when he should say something. But he also knows when to leave you alone, which is a nice thing as well. Um, and uh, he just, 
he really knows how to translate what he wants from you. And, uh, and it, it's nice to have a director that understands both the actor and then the directing thing. So you know that he, even if he, he may be asking you to go to places that you're not necessarily comfortable with or whatnot, you can trust him because you know that he's not going to guide you in the wrong direction. You played Pocahontas in a new world mm -hmm. that Terrence Malick directed, and he takes forever, doesn't he? Because he uses the script very much like guidelines. Um that you kind of throw the script away when you're on set. And uh, he's uh, one of those directors that it's so inspiring to work with because you never know what magic is going to happen on set or what magic he's going to capture because there were times I was on set and, um, you know, they were supposed to be filming a different scene and I would be sitting by a tree playing with like a twig or something and I would notice that it was strangely quiet and then so I kind of like looked up and I would see him behind a tree with the camera secretly <laughs> filming me. <laughs> and so like, you know, he would just capture these really real beautiful moments. And there were some, some of those scenes in the new world, for example, when I'm with uh, Christian Bale and uh, we're in the field and I kind of like fall backwards. That was absolutely not in the script. And I was actually very sick that day and I kind of passed out. And I fell back into the mud. And, um, and then Christian picked me up and, you know, I just kept going with it. But Terry just kept rolling. And he would just capture these magical, beautiful moments. Um, and just, you know, his camera and the way that him and Emmanuel Lubinsky he's, work together. He's like a painter. His films yeah. are, are more visually stunning, I think, than, than most. Well, uh, yeah, but it was like moving, yeah. moving poetry, moving art. The way that they had the camera almost um, be a character in itself. And one of the things that I loved doing with Terry that also, you know, Scott Cooper did a lot too, was that, you know, we had more lines than what ends up in the film. But um, especially with Terry, he would, you know, have 10 pages for me to learn in the morning and I'd freak out and I'd be like, oh my gosh, I have to learn this, I have to learn this. And I'd be so proud of myself that I learned it and I would go to set and I would do the first take and then he was like, good, good. Now, uh, now, Coriolica, I just, I want you to do the same thing, but don't say anything at all. Just say it through your eyes. <laughs> and I was like, oh, great. How do I, <laughs> okay, I'll just say it through my eyes. Um, but there is something so beautiful about that because, you know, just as in general in life, like uh, we hide behind our words and our words, we can say a lot of pretty words, but there's such an honesty in those moments where you don't speak and where you don't say anything. And, you know, um, he really captures that in the new world. And Scott Cooper also, you know, did a lot of that in hostels as well and just not being afraid to stay on the actor and just capture those really honest moments. That, that's one of the great advantages, he said, because it was an independently financed film. He was able right. to make the movie that he wanted. Thankfully to like Ken Cow and John Lusher, who are the producers on it. And that's a really rare, it's a, it's a rare thing to be able to have the freedom to do that mm -hmm. nowadays um, with making films like that. It's a, a beautiful film. Yeah. I understand just from, from reading your your bio, you do a lot of philanthropy. Yes. Is there a special one that uh, you'd like to share with us? Because um, it's like she does this and this and this and this, so many helpful, wonderful, uh, charitable well, I organizations. Well, I feel like I, you know, I the reason I got into acting is because I feel like you have this an amazing platform as a celebrity or as an artist to help amplify those voices that are seldom heard and bring to life important stories. So that's why I got into acting because to me, I just saw such a power in that and uh, I just tried to do my best to, you know, uh, do a little, a little good in the world. Um, and I feel like if you're not doing that, then good. what are you contributing? Um, so I, yeah, I don't know. Um, I do a lot of work with grassroots youth organizations all around the world, um, indigenous 
communities uh, fighting against multinational extractive industries and different things like that. And then also I have my own youth organization called Action Hero Network. It's about uh, inspiring young people to be rebellious against failure and be rebellious in positive ways. And instead of, you know, retracting from the world, starting to take action, because many times growing up when I was Younger, I used to think to myself, there's so many horrible things happening in the world and I would feel so overwhelmed by it. And then I thought, why is nobody doing anything about this? And then I looked at myself and I was like, well, I'm somebody and why am I not doing something? And I should do something. And, you know, I really believe in one small action a day multiplied by millions is what changes the world. So I hope uh, you're right. Thank you for joining us, Corianta. 